Hey, what's up, my fellow no money spenders? Today, we're going to talk about what you need to grind right now to make sure you're getting all you can get out of MLB The Show 23 in Diamond Dynasty. Let's get into it. So we are going to be talking about a few different things based upon what your goals are in Diamond Dynasty this year. Not everybody has the same goals. So I want to make sure what you want to do. Some people want to make sure they finish all the collections so they can get the best cards, especially when the core series collections, which we're expecting to happen probably within the next month, come out. If you're looking to just get your live series collections done, are you looking to get the set one collections done before you can't use them anymore? Because when, when season three comes around, you can't use those sets anymore. So there's gonna be different things that you want to do. So we're going to go over a few different scenarios here. What might be best for you based upon how often you want to flip cards, if you want to flip them at all, how often and you actually play the game. I generally play about two hours a day. So I will be giving tips on what I do based upon, you know, you could kind of think about that. I usually play a ranked seasons game and maybe a couple event games. And after that, I don't really get to play much. A lot of my stub building is done on the marketplace, which we will get into either being flipping or investments. I do a lot of both. Now, just to give you a little background on me, if you are new to my channel and new to my videos, I did actually complete the live series collections two weeks into the game, all no money spent and not playing more than like two hours a day with the exception of the first night where I did play for about four hours. But other than that, you know, we, did, we got it done pretty quickly, pretty easily. Uh, you can go back into my channel and you can see that video. It's actually on my channel page if you're interested in that, but I will be going over some of those tips as well. All right, so most people want to complete the live series collections, mainly because there are a lot of cars that are gate kept here, especially the ones that are for the divisions or the league. Those are some special cards. And chances are when the core collections come out, which we do assume are still going to come out, usually they come around in early June, within the first week of June, probably that first Friday in June. Is when it's more likely going to happen you're going to probably need a lot of those live series cards if you don't want to spend a ton of stubs on some cards that are currently cheap if you're looking at the live series right now like i am the live series right now is actually probably the cheapest it's going to be so if you have the stubs to buy these expensive cards buy them because what sds generally does is when the live series cards are starting to get cheaper they put out flash not flash sales they did that yesterday um which is another thing that you should take advantage of we're going to talk to talk about in a second um they wind up doing is putting stub sales up they put stub sales up 25 percent off 50 percent off whatever it is it makes all the price of the cards inflate as they're putting more money into the marketplace so when that happens these cards are going to skyrocket again so mike trout at 180 and shohei at 130 moogie bets is really the only card that has gained a lot of value recently has been holding his value and he's kind of the gatekeeper right now for the national league especially since he's been playing shortstop and they're going to add that i don't think it's going to become his primary position it may uh, he, he's been playing there a lot but it's definitely going to be added as a secondary position which gives him even that much more value especially if he's going to get upgraded at some point so he's kind of the gatekeeper there so i do think you should try to finish live series out as quickly as possible especially since the flash sale just happened yesterday on friday which means a stub sale is probably coming within the next week and then these prices are going to inflate again and then we'll come back down for probably at least a week or two after that so if you're looking to do it in the next month now's probably the good time because the market is really really low like this hasn't happened before in, in previous years, having these cards like Mike Trout this low, this early, Mookie Betts. Like there aren't many cards right here, Aaron Judge, that uh, that are going, uh, there is actually pretty cheap. Live series is cheap. It's, I think it's gonna be the cheapest it's gonna be. I, I think you should invest in the live series now. Next thing you need to be grinding is the season one reward path. I've been done with it for a while now. It didn't take that long. It felt like the first half took a while, and then after after a while, especially you start doing the affinities and getting the XPs out of there, this thing just shot through. And the amount of stubs I've made through the rewinds here is absolutely insane. I pulled, uh, just yesterday, I actually pulled uh, JT Real Muto out of, out of the Around the World. I believe it was the Around the World pack. I've pulled a Josh Hader because of these packs. I've pulled cards probably worth in excess of 600, 700 thousand uh, stubs right now just from playing this which has really been to uh, really been helping me clean, clean out collections now i can i can actually complete um to to get the first card here in set one if i auto select here i have 142 but there's lots of cards i don't really want to lock in right now so i there's like eight cards i don't want to like i don't want to lock in this feller i don't want to lock in this hater these are cards I don't particularly want to lock in right now just for a card that I'm not going to be able to use. And, you know, 
really when I'm thinking about it right now, as we move on and season one is coming to a close within the next two weeks and there's then there's season two where you can still use set one cards but once july comes i think it's july 14th or something along those lines mid july about the all-star break you're not going to be able to use these set one cards outside of your all-star and, and truth be told the only card that i think that i would still be using is this chipper jones card this is a, chipper jones here is an end game card i don't think he's going to get a better card than this this is an absolutely amazing card and they didn't give him the best of cards last year this is a much better card, so I think they're kind of making up by doing it early this year. Shortstop, secondary, would be better if he had an outfield, like a left field one as well, but whatever, it doesn't matter. This is probably the only card that, from set one, in my opinion, that's that's worth keeping. Uh, Babe Ruth, there's nothing special about this card. Yeah, he's 125s across the board, but you don't need that, and uh, with a lot of parallels, you could get that with a lot of cards anyway. And this Pedro card's all right, but again, it's a starting pitcher, with especially how people quit in this game. It's really no big deal. So we really only have one card here. So I don't know if it's worth collecting past past Chipper, if I'm being completely honest, for the month, if you haven't done it yet. Like, if you completed this weeks ago, then maybe I could say it's worth it. But I'm not sure if these set one cards are going to be in the core collections. Now, they very well may be. So there's that to think of. But I'm thinking no, considering it's like you're already getting the rewards for it right now, so you just kind of really have to think, do you really need to play with these cards? Do you want these cards that badly? Um, if you haven't, haven't completed up to 140 yet, I would say stop at 140. It's probably what I'm going to do unless they give us some more information right before you can't use these cards anymore. Um, it's probably how it's going to be. Or if it's the last day to collect them, then I have a decision to make. But there are, there are so many free cards. So what I'm pretty much what I'm saying is do not lock in any cards that cost stubs. I, I wound up actually buying this card. It's one of the few cards I've bought recently because I really wanted to play with it for a long time. Um, you know, and I had a lot of stubs laying around based upon my investments, and we'll go into that in a moment. But some of these cards, I just don't... Uh, I, oh, this one dropped because of uh, the packs, the Conquest. But, you know, these are just cards. I, I don't really know if I want to lock them in. Now, maybe if they're dropping down to, to pretty much quick sell over here, then you could put them in. But you get so many cards just through the Team Affinity that... I think that's about all that you should really lock in if you are a no money spent player. Make sure you're doing every program, especially when they drop. Just get them done. There's so much good stuff in there. There's so many packs that you can get from them. I like do this Mexico series. None of these cards are amazing, but these are core cards, which I thought was interesting, which makes me believe since they're putting core cards in the game and the, and the BR cards are also core cards. It makes me feel that they definitely are doing core collections. Like last year, we had the first one was uh, was the first one last year. George Brett was the first one last year, which is one of my favorite cards ever in MLB The Show. And you're going to need to have a lot of those cards. So truth be told is that you need to get, get this done because when it drops, you don't want to be doing this at a later date. Same thing with Tops Now. Even though Tops 1, the Tops Now are great because they help you get the set one. So I'm going to actually, once I finish this, I'm going to probably finish it right after this video. I'm going to be able to get Chipper Jones finally. And then I don't think I'm going to actually be collecting anymore because, again, no money spent. Those those stubs can be uh, pretty valuable. So I'm going to kind of just hold on to those cards. I'm not selling them yet because SDS sometimes throws you a little curveball here in no open intended. And they give you some more information that they didn't really give you beforehand or they just change what they were going to do based upon feedback from the community in general. So, you know, if you can get the set ones done with all cards that you can't, that, that, that are all no-sells to begin with, by all means, go do it. But do not lock in cards that are above quick sell value, especially from set one to get those cards because it may not, it's more than likely not going to be worth it in the long run. Now, some of this stuff seems obvious, but finish all your conquests. And while you're doing the conquest, make sure you're doing the missions of the current, of the current programs, especially, well, you get the team affinities done. But I'm going to actually tackle that this week because there's not much for else for uh, me to do. These weekly wonders, you don't really have to think about these too much, to be honest. That you kind of just get them done as as you're playing. These missions here, like, you know, some hits, some innings pitched. Like, this is not a big deal. You can play a nine-inning game with just a couple of Padres pitchers and get that done. And then some hits with Giants. Throw them in an events game and you'll and you'll get done with it too. And you'll get, you'll get more PXP while you're doing it as Charisma well. Charisma series has some more set one cards you can get over here as well there's lots of options to do this no money spent so make sure once again i know it's not like a broken record make sure cards that you can sell 
do not lock them in. Do not lock them in until the very last second, unless you have them all really, really early and you just want those cards and you can have the, the set toppers for a long period of time, then by all means, do it. By all means, do it. Another tip I would say is please... Do not buy cards when they first come out just to buy them if you're not done with collections. It's generally not a good idea for a no money spent player because the best way that you can make sure that you have fun the entire life cycle of the game is by sacrificing the beginning part of some of the cards. Now, are there some awesome cards to play with right now like that, that 99 Trout card and that 99 Shohei? For sure, but you know what? They're probably going to get more 99s throughout the year. I don't think it's because they're having all these 99s. I don't think they're only going to get one 99. My guess is that they each get at least two. So there's probably going to be at least one more 99 for each of those cards. I mean, Shohei has two 99s right now. I'm not wrong on that, right? Oh, no. One's a 97. He's got 97 and a 99. I, I do believe that uh, two of the best players in baseball are going to get multiple 99s throughout the year. So don't feel you need to have these cards right now. Once you finish collections, especially the live series collections, then you can kind of do what you want to do, which is kind of like what I've been doing lately. I haven't been grinding the market as much. I have been doing some investments. I'll show you a few. Some of them uh, looked like they were uh, taken a bit off. But one of my good ones right here, which I have some more orders in for, is Zach Gallen here. Okay, let's take a look at Zach Gallen. We're going to also have a video on investments coming up soon, especially to invest now early. Zach Gallen right here has a nice differential, okay? We're just going to say he's going for 4K, which means if you were to buy him for 31 and you were to sell him, you know, you would get a 400 stub decrease there, but you're still making, still making 400 stubs if you were to sell it right now. So it's actually a pretty good card to flip, and he's moving pretty quickly. It's another thing that you got to look at when you're when you're investing. It's like, am I investing in terms of just so I can sell them after they get upgraded? Or am I investing right now to make more stubs and then I can invest even more? So I actually bought all these Zach Allens yesterday based upon my San Francisco Giant and Padres investments. Okay, you buy in cards for 30, selling them for 85, and they're moving quickly because of the program right now. So it's just a great way to make really quick stubs while you're not even paying attention. So Zach Gallen is a big one. I say invest in Zach Gallen now while he's cheap. He still has his his scoreless inning streak. I believe it's up to like 20, 23 innings or was it 29 innings. I don't know what it was, but it's really good. I think he got roughed up in one start and he's been amazing absolutely since. So that's why they upgraded him and I was a little surprised, but hey, he's doing fantastic things. And if you look at his, his attributes here, he has 70... 76 walks per nine when he's not walking many guys right now. His hits per nine, I think, is probably relatively accurate, but his Ks per nine, he's striking out well over a batter per inning right now, and he's got very low Ks per nine. Zach Gallen is most certainly, unless he has two awful starts, you know, out of his three before the next update, unless he has two awful starts, I think he's going to be upgraded to at least an 87 or 88, and you're going to get a massive gain. I'm looking to get at least, at least 100 Zach Gallons by the next time. Because look, like I was saying, don't invest in cards that you're not going to have long term. It, it's all about really figuring it out um, a long term solution when you're playing no money spent. It's not about short term, you know, long term solutions. I did want that Tatis card, and that might be a card that I use as a wild card if I like the card better than um, Chipper Jones. And if it's not, I'll probably sell it midway through season two. So he still has some value on that. All right, so that is the end of the video for the no money spent, what to grind right now, how to how to go about making sure you are maximizing what you can do being a no money spent player. Next video is actually going to be on investments that I'm looking into right now outside of just Zach Gallon because there are a lot. A lot of upgrades are going to be happening, especially on a three-week update cycle when it generally used to be a two-week update cycle. So 50% more data you're going to get a lot more things moving around which honestly i kind of dig i kind of dig they, they'll be a little quicker to upgrade or downgrade guys based upon it because it's a it's a larger sample size so we're going to get talk about that in the next video and i'll see you there